Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. This is um, an ignition module, a kit, a Velleman kit. And this is what I've been using on my cars for probably about the last 15 years, probably more. And I'm going to put it into this box. I don't know how well it'll show up, but I've marked a rectangle on there. 15 and a half by 20. I must admit, I've done probably made a very difficult job of this. Something that should have been easy, but <clears throat> I decided to make it so that this unit just bolts to the firewall and then the, the loom plugs onto it. It's got four wires, so I've connected, I've gone with a tab, like that, a Lucar tab, through. Now there's a nut against each metal piece so it isn't clamping against the, against the plastic. The plastic, if the plastic got warm and melted it wouldn't loosen the connection is what I'm trying to say. Um, the only one I've got a problem with is this one here which is a bit close but as long as I can get it clear once it's all screwed together it should be okay. I've got to solder those but I can solder those after it's gone back together. So what I'm going to do now is try, everything's a bit chunky in here, it could have done with everything being a little bit lighter weight. You can just come out with four wires but I wanted to make it a standalone unit. I just want to use one of these, I've never used one before. I had to borrow it because I couldn't find my soldering iron. Can't imagine why I couldn't find it. Anyway, <laughs> there's the finished item. I think it's going to be okay. That's a solder the four wires here. And these are in the position lined up with... Um, these are in the position lined up with the four holes. So I can look on the wiring di diagram and I know which wires has to have to go on these four connectors. Um, if I was doing another one, I, I would make the hole in the box further that up that way to give more clearance at this end here, to give more clearance there. I think it's okay. Either that or space that one to there to give more clearance for that there. There's the main body, that's as I showed it before. It's got two screws in there holding that there to so it won't come loose. The screws don't, um, you know, haven't gone into any of the wires or anything, so that's good. Here's a base, the base, and I've made these two little tabs, um, you know, just made from a little bit of metal bent. They're actually made from a hose clip. That's why it's got like a double end on it double thickness on the end but I think that makes quite a neat little tab really and then I'd got a very slight foul condition on this connection here on that, that bit of insulation there so I just um, put a bit of marker on it and then put it on and notice where it touched the marker and I just hit that with a grinder it didn't really do it very well but it has removed uh, some material now this just clips into place nicely it just just goes in into position nicely without um, <laughs> without standing up okay it, it does pop out but it's not fouling oh it hasn't popped out now look now I've pressed it in these screws go into this area here where there's plenty of clearance Okay, so that's quite a neat little unit now. There's four little screws that go in the back. So I'll put those screws in and that's that. Now that can be then screwed onto the bulkhead. It has four connections. One, each, one equals 12 volt ignition. One, two equals distributor. Three equals coil. And four is ground. So that, that one there goes to earth. So it's 12 volt 
ignition so 12 volt in 12 volt out to the coil that one goes to the coil that one goes to the distributor and that one goes to earth one two three four and the, the uh, wiring diagram for these is, is on the internet so I don't need to find it I can just look it up on there and this is um, a Velleman V E double L E M A N um, ignition amplifier unit and I've been using these for about probably 20 years now the one on my roadster must be getting on for 20 years old now okay right out so that's done then all, all except for uh, putting the screws on the back okay that's another little piece in the jig so what I'm doing I'm gathering together all the electrical components and trying to work out where they're going to go okay I'll bring it back when there's more to show hello um, I'm sh shining the light and the camera up at the top of the firewall inside the 32 I had some fancy ideas to make some big plates and things to hold various electrical components but I'm kind of working towards possibly just little localised brackets so the ignition module that I've made I have reworked the two tags to two longer tags that bolt straight into existing holes in the firewall there's one there and there's oh, that's shiny and there's one up there you have to remember that there's a big thing that bolts down here it's kind of in this area here so the wires should be able to come up these aren't the wires but the wires should be able to come up over the end of it and just plug onto there okay i'll bring it back when there's more to show hello right i've made a simple bracket and I've just laid that on there and scribed through there so what I'm going to do is drill and tap some holes there here's the two um, things where the brackets going to screw on this these are the old coil brackets and they're in D nuts which are in good condition Here's the bracket, those are through holes and those are tapped so that's going to go on there like that. There's the bracket screwed in place, I know they're countersunk screws, um, they're all I've got with that thread. So that's looking good, there's enough clearance behind the holes I think, there's enough clearance behind the holes for the uh, screws okay i'll screw the thing on then see how it looks hello right there's the um thing in place what i did i, I put a screw through from the back so i'm just put a nut on the top because it's easy to just hang it on the nut there it's easy to just hang it on a nut i might actually put studs on the others as well but anyway that's the idea there it is in place Okay, so there's the idea, these three wires can come up there like that, nice and easy, you know, not running all around the car. They can go there easily. That bat terminal gives me a sort of a tapping point for other things. So I've got two things mounted now, so that's, that's a good little bit of progress. Am I happy with that ignition module? I think I'm happy that it's not in the direct line of this open area here. You see, that's, you know, you can see daylight through there. Yeah, I think I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. If I have problems with it, I can make another one and move it. Because the coil is just the other side of that hole, I want the wires to come from here down to the coil there. 
Okay. Right. I'm just kind of not doing anything at the moment now. I'm just thinking. Right, so, you know, me thinking doesn't make for good video content, does it? I um, made a bit of a modification, as usual. I extended the leg on the one side of that bracket. I put a fuse box on there. I've also put a little stud on the end, which I can use an, as an earth point. Um, or maybe make the flasher unit on there. Because that fuse box isn't heavy. But it wants to be firmly located so, you know, you can push things in and out. And what I've done, I've put screws through from the back to hold the regulator box as well. Hello. Here's my next little bit of nonsense. It's a bracket. It worked out quite funny actually because it was it was longer than I needed, but I suddenly realised I wanted a bit that stuck up. So what I did, I just got the end and bent it over like that, 45 degrees, so it went stuck up. And I'll show you what it's for. That will go like that. Clearing that piece, the uh, ignition module. I'll show you what it what it does. There's the flasher unit. Two relays there. Look. Now I've done these. These relays are for the uh, flashing indicators. So what I realised, they they clip onto this a piece of metal of a certain width, like a rail. So I thought, okay, well, it's a bit easier to just cut a piece of metal to a certain width, you know, then mess about with screws and things to hold it on. So I thought, well, that'll work okay. So these are to do with the flashing indicators. So I thought, well, I might as well put the flasher unit right next to it because I need to go from the flasher unit actually to four of these terminals. I can't remember quite which ones. Whichever is the, you know, flashing indicator bit needs to connect to those four there. The four in the middle there go to your let's say rear right flashing indicator in other words the brake light filament front right flashing indicator in other words the front flasher front left on that one there and rear left on that one there and then what you do you put a brake signal in on that one and that one And then when you, when you, so there's, so there is, <coughs> so there is, this is live all the time the ignition is on, what, you know, but wherever the power goes in is live when the ignition is on. So there's a, there's a flashing feed here waiting for somewhere to go. So it's just sitting here on these four pins waiting. And when you, flick your indicator switch it pulls that relay in ka -chunk. it connects this flashing indicator connects this this flashing indicator to this side and the left and the right will flash when neither of them are connected are energized in other words you don't have the indicators on either side When you don't have either of them on, the brake light, when, the, when you put the brake lights onto these two, it goes to the two rear brake light filaments. So whichever ones you have the brake lights going to, the ones next to them need to be the rear brake light filaments on the rear lights. <clears throat> I've never actually used relays this big before and the reason I got these was because these are standard type terminals here so my four wires going out can just you know use standard type fittings 
these two go to ground, they go to ground, and this goes to the one side of the indicator switch, and that goes to the other side of the indicator switch. So you energize that, that grounds, this one clicks in. If the brake lights are on, it stops the brake light by switching it over and it comes from there instead and it puts the indicators on. Ding, 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 ding. That's how that works. And I used to make up and sell units like this, but more compact and fitted inside a box. Mark Sparks, that was. Okay, right, so I'm getting there now, look. I've got my regulator, my fuse box, and my ignition module, my relays for my indicators, and my flasher unit. This is obviously just an old one that I found about lying about. If, if it doesn't work, I'll order a new one to the same pattern. There's the setup, but actually screwed in, bolted in. Um, yeah. I quite like it. I think it looks okay. I wouldn't put a lightning hole in it because it's still quite um, light. It has got a bit of a spring to it actually. You can't have stuff too low down because you, you can see it because the dashboard isn't very... I'll put the dash on now. What you can see is that you can't see anything there. Because like this, this corner of the tunnel is about the lowest part that you can, you know, that that's kind of the, the lowest part where things start to become visible below that. Then you've got even more visibility towards this outside, so that stuff tucked away. I mean, I'm having to bend down now to look up there. But the reason I'm biasing stuff to the passenger side the reason I'm biasing things to the passenger side is because with this instrument panel here, uh, this supplementary dash panel, you've got much, imp you've got, your access is impeded to that side there, but this side it's nice and free and open. So I thought I would concentrate everything over on this side. Yeah, okay. You know, it's, it's, I, I'll just share my philosophy. Look, I'm not going into production. I'm not making a hundred thousand of these, you know, a month. Um, it, it, it's a one-off. So my philosophy is that if you can find a method that works, even though it might be a little bit time consuming or a little bit, you know, uh, finicky or tricky. It doesn't matter, you've only got to do it once and once it's done, it's done. As long as it's a good sound job and it works, you know, so what if you use an extra three foot of wire? It doesn't matter. Get it done, get it fitted, get it on, get it working. You know, if you then went on to build another one, you'd probably just fine tune things and hone ideas and concepts you know and make it slightly different but if it's a one-off just find something that works as long as it's sound and it works just get on with it and do it that's my philosophy anyway and that's what i'm doing okay the other thing is as well when you elect to put your work up for scrut worldwide scrutiny you do tend to try your, your best not to make it a shoddy job okay right on get in there look instrument panel supplementary instruments ford pop ammeter ford pop fuel gauge will go there i've had to i've got two but one was faulty so I'm, there's one on its way to replace it the, the other one I put in the, into the coupe so Ford pop fuel gauge you're going to go there Ford pop ammeter and um, a 32 speedo in the middle here's a switch that's going to go in there and that'll give me my indicators right off 
left, off, right, off, left. And the other thing I need is a buzzer. It's really useful to have a buzzer on these things because you're more likely to hear the buzzer than you are to see a light. Here's my light switch, side, head. This switch will, is a dual purpose switch and it's the same switch as there, so it's off in the middle. That would be um, electric fuel pump. So, you know, it'll be a case of get in, turn it on, put the pump on, wait for it to stop ticking, turn it off, start the engine on the key there, start the engine. This will start on the key. This will start on the key, it hasn't got a, press, a push button. Um, and then if things, you know, if it gets hot, that'll be the fan electric fan off there the thing oh there's a horn there there's a horn I'll fit that somewhere under the car klaxon made in France alto high hmm you know somewhere I've got uh, an Uuga horn so maybe I'll try and find that. That's the point, isn't it? I need I need something to do the horn. So we'll, I will need a push button or something somewhere. Hello, I've just made this little gang of wires here. Four there and one with a longer link to feed it. And what I've been using, I've been using um, my crimpers which are uninsulated and then these are the these are the crimps like that those are ones that I kind of got the wires wrong what I'd be doing, I'm squeezing them and then putting them in this little vise and squeezing it with that makes it a bit easier on the hands so I'll put that in place, I'll show you where it goes so that will give a flashing signal to all of these four terminals. Okay, right, that's the first little part of the jigsaw. Right, thanks very much then. A good bit of progress there today. So thanks a lot, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Hello, um, look, I've got some wire in my hand. Just put this together, it's a, a wire with a connector and then into the she then I've threaded two wires there and put a bit of heat shrink on them there's a bit of heat shrink there and then there's three the three wires come out here and these go onto the ignition module those two go to the coil and that one will go to the distributor there's the wires coming through. Uh, the idea is that they'll loop up here like this around the outside of here. Um, I thought it better to just come out like that. So brown is power, which is that one. That's brown. That's distributor, which I believe is number two there. And that is the other side of the coil, which I believe is that one. I'll double check. So those three go there, that goes down there. That bit of heat shrink will go there to protect it as it goes through that hole. So when I've got the position for that, I'll sort of just warm it a little bit. I might just leave it actually. So that's okay like that. What I thought, what I have decided to do is kind of do some of these little standalone jobs. Do them as standalone. These, because I've done the earth wire on there, and I've done the earth wire on there, 
and I've done the fade from there to there. Just knock off these little standalone jobs. So basically, the power. So basically, the power for all the ignition needs to come in on that terminal there. From the ignition switch, it will come to there, and that will fade this unit and the coil. That's the coil there. Um, there's the connection down onto the distributor down there. Now, the, with, with this unit, the unit in there, the you have to remove the condenser, so that condenser will be removed. That condenser there will be removed. So the wire comes up here. What's very important is that it's held out of the way from the exhaust riser there, so it doesn't get burnt. Uh, coming from this end, it comes down behind the coil and is held captive in the bracket of the coil. And those two wires come up there. And then the one to the distributor goes down along the top of the engine like that. So I think that's quite neat really. It doesn't... It's not all out, loud, in your face. Okay, good. That, that, that's a little bit of wiring. <clears throat> I'm not feeling very well actually. I think, feel like I've catch, caught a cold. I don't believe it's the COVID. I just believe it's a simple cold because my son's had something similar and he tested negative. So, um, so I'm not too, feeling too great. I hope it doesn't develop into anything particularly bad. I don't feel too bad. I just feel a bit kind of washed out but a little bit of wire and it's nice and quiet it's quiet work it's clean work although you wouldn't think it I think that's actually quite neat so my ignition switch is there but I but I think I'm quite happy to do a couple of standalone harnesses for the um, voltage regulator and the ignition there you know and a couple of little standalone jobs over here but most of everything else I need to consider making up um, you know quite a complex harness to uh, you know take everything into account okay well, that's enough for that little job for now. I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Bye. So now I'm thinking about wires that need to run from up here to down there. The main wire from the batch from the solenoid through to give power to the car. Um, a wire for pulling in the starter, you know the starter solenoid. I need a horn wire. I will also need wires for the lights, mm -hmm. rear lights, front lights, indicators front, indicators rear. I've looked all round and I, I can't actually tell where they used to put the wires through from inside the car to outside the car on a 32. And I sort of didn't want them coming all down here I didn't want them all coming down here and getting all the way of the pedals a lot of my stuff is on this side so I didn't really want to put them over there although that was an option but I'm also kind of already utilizing that hole there didn't want to shove a lot more wires through there and then when you come out when you come out you're kind of hanging in limbo then you know you're hanging in midair so hmm. So I thought what I'd do is bring them across here like that and down and back because that's a relatively narrow thing to bridge. Now the, the floorboard sits on there so I've just done a couple of things and I'll show you what I've done. So there's the floorboard that's the, oops, that's the way around it sits so this is the area we're interested in. So what I've just done is use my saw in that way that I used it before, you know, as a kind of a router. And I've routed out a passageway there for the wires to go through. What I've also done 
because I need to know where that is and I need the wires to stay in place. I've made this metal bracket. This metal bracket fits in here like that. So what I thought I would do is have that in place on there and that will give me like a window to feed the wires through like, like that. So as long as all my wires can go through that hole I know I'm kind of okay. So I can come down here, there's a gap at the end of that board so I can go through the gap, through there and then down here and from here I can go forwards or backwards as I need. So there'll be a bit of a junction box in that area there. Look, I'm, I'm not an auto electrician, but, but I have wired a couple of cars and I tend to always do them from scratch because they are relatively simple. But finding a path from the outside to the inside is sometimes difficult. And I wanted to keep it away from the pedals so that they can come down there like that. Excuse me if I sound a little bit bunged up, I've got a little bit of a cold. Okay, so that's my little bit of progress. So I'll begin to map out the routing for the wires. Oh, the other thing I want to do, I've got this dip switch which will go there. So that can go there. That's um, a heller. So the wires can come up the side of the board and into that. The wires screw onto there like that. Then you screw it down, it kind of encapsulates them. From my light switch I need to go to the middle and then from the these two I need to go forwards for the lights. But now I know where the wires have to go. To be honest, the one coming from the light switch will come down here. The ones going forward will go through the bridge and forward, and, well forward, yeah. But just spending 10 minutes making that little bracket will be a benefit, I think. Okay, thanks very much then, I'll catch you later. Might be an idea to bring the wires along behind the dashboard here and down the B pillar. Because I've got quite a lot of connections here. And this one needs to go to the ammeter. The start one goes down there. Uh, I've got an accessory bead on the feed on the back of the switch that can go to the fuel pump and the there the uh, brake light switch. Uh, yeah, I think I can work with that. I think I can work with that. The only thing I would have to be careful is that the loom doesn't get caught on if I reinstate the. Um, check strap here which I haven't got <laughs> okay right okay back in a bit and although I had it slightly differently to that what I've done now is in that area there I had this and I've took it off and switched it to this side because I'm going to basically run I had to kind of choose a routing for the wiring. So what I've done, I, I had this idea here but I've moved it from here to here because all the wiring is going to run across the top of here because I've got these things here that I can kind of anchor it to. That's why I left this bit long here. It can run across here to the instruments. Everything can run down here Everything can run through here. Everything can run through here. Like this from here. So you come down there. Through there. Through a little kind of tunnel. Into the area below the car. And from there I can go forward to the, to the, to the headlights and the front indicators and things. Side lights. The fan. And I can come back to the tail lights. I can pick up the power from the solenoid which is below where I'm sitting and so on. So that has gained me a little bit of cable by coming there. 
I don't think I'll kind of come down that side and put wires through the other side. I don't think I need to. Okay, so that's why I put that there because all these wires have to come and go up and down this side here. Uh, last night I did a little job. I didn't record it because I haven't been feeling very well lately and um, to be honest it was hard work just to do it but I... Can you see those wires wrapped around that chassis brace? And then they go onto there, onto the thing, onto the brake light switch. Well, my little brainwave. <laughs> Here's my little thing that I rigged up last night. So, on that battery terminal there, not battery terminal, on that live terminal on the solenoid there, is a connector tab thing and onto it is this wire not this brown one this orange one that goes into a fuse holder and the other end of that orange wire comes out there and feeds this little miniature harness that I've made here and it feeds the horn which is there next to the solenoid and you can see there's two wires coming off the other one goes forward to there one of these and then comes back to here which I haven't finished off so basically I've got to run two wires from here one from here which will be the signal from the brake lights and one from up there which we will, because that's live, that one there is live, this one will go up to the, up by the steering wheel and have a little push button for the horn. Beep, beep. And what a good tip is to always shove some rag or some something, kitchen roll or something up the horn so that if you sound it accidentally while you're wiring the car it doesn't make a lot of noise. I thought I'd just twist these wires together and run them along there. And there's a, there will be a fuse in there that will feed the horn and the brakes, the brake light. And then that other terminal there, this brown wire will be feeding the whole car. So this will have a heavy duty terminal and we'll go onto there. That's a bigger than normal terminal that is like a three eighths I think instead of a quarter. Um, and this white wire here, this white one, will go on there. I think it's that one. And that will be the one that pulls the start, that makes it start. This black one will have a male and a female terminal on it to extend it, and that will go up to the brake light switch part of the those uh, relays on the on the bulkhead. I might do those next actually. Now I know where my wiring routing is. It should be along here. And I might just have the wires all um, just exposed and just um, just bound at certain intervals. These are just standard terminals that I modified to make them round. Just kind of straighten them up and then bend them round so they go on there. They're, you know, reasonably tight. You can always give them a little squeeze with the pliers if they're not tight enough. Okay. These these jobs, just look at one wire at a time and uh, sort it out. Once you have established the routing for the wires, you can then start running all the wires in that run that same route and then start bundling them together. So I've got my ignition switch there. Um, I've got the ammeter here. So I've got a wire from the bat terminal on there. That red wire comes round. See if I can show you. Probably not. But round to the back of the ammeter. Can you see? Yeah, just about. And then from the other side of the ammeter, 
is a heavy feed which comes down here to the to the bat terminal on the ignition switch. Down here, I suppose somewhere. I, I can't actually see the viewfinder now, so that may or may not be showing what I'm trying to show. Um, the yellow one will be the, for the horn button. The white one is for the starter solenoid. And that blue wire there is for the brake input to the flasher um, relays there, look. So what I'm doing now is just one by one working through, picking a circuit and putting a wire on it. And what, I, what I've just done is... Um, I didn't like the switches I'd got for here. The first one I tried to do up, the, the thread stripped on the on the screw there, so I thought these are rubbish. I've got some I've got one of these and I've ordered a couple more. So this will do the indicators. And there'll be one here that will do the fuel pump and the fan. I am going to run the fan through a relay. So I found um, a relay holder that has a screw, you know, you can screw it on there, look. And then this relay can plug in and plug out. And now look here, I've got, I've got some terminals that are the right type to insert in to a relay holder. So this one is the earth and that shares the earth there and that will go on there and I need to make sure that the bolt in, in the bulkhead has a good contact. That bolt up there needs to be cleaned both sides and fitted properly. I'm going to change it anyway to, a, to an inch bolt, that's a 6mm. Um, this is... okay so yeah so this is a heavy feed that comes from the fuse box and what I've also done there is took a heavy feed from that bat terminal one there to the fuse box so that first fuse has a, a bat feed to it but it goes it, it's a kind of it goes through the ammeter so that one there will pick up from that first fuse. This one here will pick up from the first fuse. And this one here, was a bit, which is a big long wire, which will, will run down the car to the engine. So that one's earthed. And then this one here will go to the switch. Oh yeah, that was the other one. I'll put a wire in for the ignition. That's the ignition wire there. That goes, that goes onto there. That wire there, that brown wire, which I will probably do again you know with some protection around it but from that ignition switch I just wanted I wanted a battery in and I just wanted the ignition on the ignition terminal and the power for the fuse box which will be for anything that's switched will come from the accessory terminal that's what I'm thinking anyway. The other good news is I received a replacement petrol gauge, a replacement fuel gauge, and I've tested it with this sender and it works perfectly. So that's good. Hello, um, here's my 32 Ford dash panel. I know it's all old and weathered, but you know, hey. Um, what I'm trying to show you though is that a Ford Pop ammeter, Ford Pop sit up and beg ammeter, and a Ford Pop sit up and beg fuel gauge both fit. This one bolts in directly, and this one almost bolts in directly it's the the tabs are clocked but you can kind of put the tabs next to where they need to go 
with a washer you can clamp it down. I've also fitted some um, push on spade connectors onto the back of that one just to make it easier for me. The beauty of this and why I'm so pleased to have found it is that the Ford Pop or a Ford Pilot sender unit fits the 32 tank with slight modification. So in a 32 you can use the Ford Pop sender and the Ford Pop gauge and they're a match pair and they work well together. And this fits the dash perfectly. All they need is a voltage reducer for the supply and there are various ways to achieve that and I'm going to experiment with a way to achieve that for this vehicle but that's later but I, I bought two of these one for the coupe one for this car and one was faulty but the supplier sent me another one and I've tested it and this one works fine so that's fitted now so there we are very good very pleased with that you know and when it's all got the proper dash in place it looks quite smart okay plus it says petrol <laughs> you know which is particularly english isn't it okay right so um it's all beginning to take shape i'll bring you back when there's more to show